This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So far in this chapter, we've looked at designing and then creating your database and then your table and looking at the correct data type to use, the field properties, managing those field properties, and then making sure you have a primary key set. It's now time with the table built to have a look at how we can enter data into that table. So using the address book underscore with data, we can see our table over here on the left in the navigation pane and double clicking it will open the table in data entry mode. Now you can see that the database has now got some records in it. And in fact, we have 99 records. We're currently looking at record one and you can move through the records by clicking forwards or backwards. Now at the minute, we're interested in how we add a new record to this table. New records are automatically added at the bottom of the table. So you could scroll all the way to the bottom to find the new row, which is here. Got a little asterisk on the left. It says new in the contact ID because the ID has not been generated as yet. And then we can click ready in the first name to start entering the data. Now the scrolling down wasn't too bad because we only have 99 records. However, what if there were 100,000 records? That would be a lot of scrolling. So let's go back to the top. We don't want to scroll to the bottom. We want to use an icon. Now the new record icon is located in two places. One down here with the navigation buttons. It's the last icon there. It's a triangle with a little light next to it. And it says when you hover, new record. Or up on the home ribbon, there is a new icon. Pretty much exactly the same. It's got the little light to indicate that's effectively where you're heading. And you'll see when you hover, you actually get the keyboard shortcut as well, which is control plus plus. So control shift plus takes you down to the last row effectively. So whichever one of those commands you go with, the keyboard shortcut, the icon down here, which you'll now notice is grayed out because we're actually already on a new record, and the button up here, which again is grayed out because we're already on the new record. We're then ready to data enter. Cursor is in the first field. We cannot type in the first field. This is an auto number field, so we need to tab past that. The first name. Well, let's look at adding myself in. We start typing. Now, as soon as you type the first letter, you can see that the ID number has been assigned. So it doesn't wait until the end of the record and the record's been completed. It assigns it as soon as you start data entering. Guy, tab, Caro, tab, 65, I, street, New York, region, New York. Now you move forwards through the fields by tabbing. You can go backwards by shift tab. So if you make an error, as I just did, on purpose, obviously, to demonstrate going backwards, you would shift tab to go backwards. Zip code, country, telephone. If you ever don't want to enter anything in a field, you just tab through. And as long as that field has not been set as required, there will be no problems. You can just carry on tabbing. Email, tab, web, Facebook ID, date of birth. Notice that it's using the input mask that we used before. So the date has to be typed in the correct way. I cannot get away with eight. I would need to put either space eight or zero two, and then the full year, including the century. Marital status, we have a little drop down for. Now, in data entry, you really want to stay on the keyboard as much as possible to ease the data entry speed. Now, we added a drop down list to marital status in an earlier lesson. And the last thing I now want to do is to move my hands off the keyboard to the mouse to click that drop down. What you will find is when you're in a field with an active drop down as we have there, if you press F4 on the keyboard, it activates the drop down. And then you can either type the first letter of what's in the list, or you can use the up and down arrows to move you up and down the list. That way you remain totally on the keyboard and the speed of data entry is increased. Tab, number of children, note it's default to zero. Two, any notes? No, default flagging, no. Full name as a calculated field, so let's work that out. Just on the subject of the flag, if we tab back, again, we need to speed up the data entry. The flag looks like I need to take the mouse and click on there. Well, actually, while you're on the field, if you press the space bar, it places the tick in there for you. And press the space bar, the tick's gone. 
So that means you don't need the mouse either. Our calculated field is calculated, so we don't do anything there. The age is calculated based on, as we saw in the earlier lesson, taking away the date entered and the date of birth. Whilst you're editing this record, you'll notice a little pencil mark right on the left hand side. And at any stage, you can change your mind about this record by pressing escape top left on the keyboard. And that will completely remove that record without actually committing it to the database. So that record is gone. However, what you will notice if I try and enter a new record, I'll try to put myself in again, is that the ID that had been assigned to that record, even though the record was never committed, has been used. So 100, the ID 100, has actually been used and assigned to a record that never actually made it as far as the database. Now, the reason for that is that Access allocates its ID numbers, its auto numbers, as soon as you start entering the data, not at the committal stage. Therefore, the number has been allocated even if it doesn't get fully used. Some database packages will allocate any auto numbers after the committal of the data. So at any stage you could cancel the entry and you would not have used up an ID number. So it's just something to bear in mind. If we tab through all the way to the end and not put anything else in, when we get to the very last field, which is the date entered, and I tab out of the last field, if there are any fields I've not put data in, as we have here, we must enter a value in the zip postcode field. Okay, so I've got to go back to the zip postcode field. So you can see that the required field is not actually checked until you try to commit the record to the database. And then we'll try and leave the record again. And it's successful. So we've come out of the end of the record, we actually end up on the next new line. And you know that this record has been committed because the pencil marks disappeared. So that's entering a new record. You need to come down to the blank new record line and you can achieve that by scrolling or using the little icon here. Let's move up to a different record. You can see the icon with the light on or the new icon there or the keyboard shortcut, control shift and plus. That will get you into a new record. You then data enter by tabbing from field to field to field until you get to the end. If you miss out any required fields, when you actually tab out at the end of the record, which is what commits the data, you will then be told if you've missed out any of the required fields. And you then need to go back and fill those in, otherwise you will not effectively be able to save that record. Now, unlike when we've edited the design of a table, we have to save the changes of the design. When it comes to data saving, our data record is automatically saved as soon as you leave the row. So as soon as you leave that row and commit the record, the data is saved. There's no need now to actually click save or control S or anything like that. The data is saved. If your computer were to crash now, that data would already be in the database. The data is committed immediately on leaving a record, not requiring you to do save. Only the design of a database needs to be saved for it to take effect. And that's how to enter data into an access table.